Hello songwriting friends, uh, I'm Dan Colbert. Welcome to episode 9 of my series, uh, A Songwriter's Notes on Songwriting. This is uh, Melody Part 2 today. Uh, last time I said I would illustrate some of the things I was talking about with uh, uh, little uh, elements of my own songs. Uh, in the pinned comment below, I'm putting links to uh, videos of those songs so you can hear uh, a little more extensively uh, what uh, the things I'm talking about today. Um, and last time I, I discussed why I save melody for the last piece of my songwriting, usually, uh, and why I get it close to free. Uh, and it's because the other three elements, harmony, your chord progression, rhythm, and lyrics, kind of build a house for the melody that really dramatically limits the possibilities for melody, at least within the confines of traditional popular Western music, which is what this series deals with. The key point that I made last time was that in my process, Harmony and rhythm normally come first and are the key pieces that give rise to uh, melody. So to illustrate some of these ideas, um, I want to start with uh, a song of mine called Cosmic Dance, whose chord progression stays entirely within the home quadrant of D major for the chorus and B minor for the verses. Of course, B minor is the relative minor of D major. So it's really all within that same one, four, five uh, quadrant of the circle of fifths that I talked about so much at the beginning of this series on harmony. The only slight variation that I make to that is that I add a flat seven to a few chords. So this simple, uh, harmonically simple song seems like a pretty good place to start with melody. And I'll also note that the rhythm is very simple, basically quarter notes, uh, and most chords are one measure. So uh, harmony and rhythm aren't closing in the box for melody that much. Uh, and one thing I think this may have led to for the verse melody is a fairly horizontal line. Remember we talked last time about how uh, someone like John Lennon tends to write fairly horizontal melodies uh, that don't have a big kind of up and down range, whereas Paul McCartney tended to do that a lot more. Uh, this song, the verse, it has a fairly horizontal line, um, and I think you'll see that the melody is more vertical. So let me um, play the and sing the uh, first verse for you, and you'll kind of hear... Uh, in, in this B minor, um, that it's a little, a little bit horizontal, okay? Do you soothe others' pain by your good deeds? It's not such a bad thing to know that your heart bleeds. The roots of tall trees become intertwined. Let's be like them, will you be mine? Okay, that last G chord is the start of the chorus, which I'll play for you in a moment. Uh, the horizontal melodic line kind of reinforces, to my mind, the minor key, B minor, of the verse. It's a flatter feeling. The words play into this as well. Again, none of this was thought out or intentional. This is what came out of my um, kind of being open to uh, a feeling, okay? So the words play into this, soothe others' pain, bleeding heart, things like that. The melody begins to lift only at the end of the verse. Um, Will you be mine? Okay, as it shifts into the chorus as the harmony builds from A minor to C to the D major tonic of the chorus. Do you ever get cosmic? Do you ever dance? Do you live in the moment? 
Do you go for romance? All the billions of stars shine just to your eyes. Infinity beckons, nothing ever dies. The word that I forgot was reflects, reflects in your eyes, okay? Um, so the chorus now in D major kind of expands its range and goes a little more vertical. So that's kind of a simple example. Um, another song of mine, Borderline, which is one of my rare story songs, is, is also very simple. The verse, in fact, is just two chords, A and D. So that doesn't help to limit the space for the melody very much. But the rhythm does. That's why I picked this song to illustrate. There's this kind of bouncy thing that the rhythm and uh, that the lyric and the uh, the melody want to follow. Okay, uh, it goes like this. kind of hear the bounciness in that. So the melody, which is also simple, um, kind of comes out of the rhythm. Uh, and the simplicity also helps the words to come out, okay? It's good um, in general, you know, we have these four basic elements of, of song. It's good to limit the complexity of several of them. I, you know, probably no more than one and maybe two at a time ought to be anything very complex. Otherwise, it'll get just muddy and kind of hard to focus in on, uh, uh, on, the, whole, on the whole of it, okay? It'll get lost. So let me just play the first uh, verse for you and you'll kind of see how the words and melody fit in with this, what, what the dominant element of this song being the rhythm. Okay, it's a very simple rhythm, but it's still a dominant the dominant element of the song, so. Jody takes orders at the borderline diner. She's trying to raise two troubled teens on her own. Their old man somewhere down in Carolina. He never bothers to call him on the phone. Okay, and then it will go into another verse. You can listen to the whole thing uh, from the link below. And by the way, the rhyme scheme, so I have Diner and, and Carolina, uh, Own and Phone. Um, so it's a, um, a pretty squared up lyric in the sense of um, that rhyme, okay, which I think reinforces in a certain way the rhythm, right? When you have a, a strong rhyme, you know, it really kind of blocks things up. And so that, so that, that strong rhythm, the, you know, that I just played is, uh, I think, um, underscored in some way and supported by that rhyme scheme, okay? Um, a new song I have, uh, again, the video is in the, the comment below, a link to the video, uh, called Chin Up, is also harmonically simple, but again, it has a, a strong rhythmic component. Uh, and you'll find, I think, that the more interesting and complex your rhythm is within limits, the more naturally your melody will come because the flow of it will be more constrained, okay? And an example of that point, I'm not gonna play Chin Up for you, but an example of that point is also a, another new song of mine called Make It Yours, which is built around uh, this rhythmic device, okay, that I just found from fooling around. I just kind of liked that, and I wanted to build that into a song, okay? 
And I knew right away that I wasn't going to want to fight that rhythmic melodically, okay? Which left me kind of two choices. I could either not sing over that bit, or I could double it with my voice, okay? Da 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 right? I actually decided to do both. I don't sing over it in the lead-in to the chorus, and then I double it uh, with my voice in the chorus. So I'm going to play the, um, uh, the second verse. Uh, there's two verses and then a chorus, two verses and, and a chorus. I'm going to play the second verse and then the, the chorus, and you'll see how both of these things kind of play out. I don't give a damn about manifestos Only fools try to make sense of crazy things My heart's become black and dry as coal No one should feel melody for free because I I ha and you know I didn't stress this in the last video but a lot of times your melody will come from little um, melodic things you do with your finger I tend to be a strummer I don't do a lot of melodic little tidbits um, this is a simple one so I'm not saying it's anything uh, big but those little pulls and hammers if you're a guitar player right that already creates some melody for you. So it's already there with the uh, accompaniment part, okay? Um, again, the rhythm in this song, the rhythm and chord progression really box me in, in, in this one. Uh, and the words also have to fit rhythmically, that I, which I stressed uh, last time. So again, once you're hemmed in, Melody for free, okay? And speaking of free, uh, my song Free to Love is a little different. Here, I think that the melody comes mainly out of the harmony, which is more complex. There's more movement in it than the previous two songs, which are quite simple. Uh, notice also that the rhythm is very simple. So really, the only kind of semi-complex thing going on is the harmony. So let me just play without singing the verse chord progression. point where I had a chord progression and possibly a very simple rhythm, uh, where do I go from, from here? Um, so as I wrote a few lines of words, I was aware that in this song the words and the melody would be dominant, okay? The more complex chord progression along with the lyrics kind of drove the melody. So I'm going to play the, the verse progression that I just played, but I'm going to sing the first verse for you. Um, so you'll kind of hear how the words fit in with the, or the melody fits in with the words. Shadows wax, shadows wane, act 
corruption always leaves a stain. Noonday sun beating down, cast no shadows on the ground. Karma's tricky. Okay, so to me, again, once I have some words that that have a rhythm of their own, right? Shadows wax and shadows wane. Action always leaves a stain. Now, it doesn't always have to be that squared up, okay? But in this case, um, uh, the simplicity of those lyrics allows the um, melody over, over this chord progression to really just come, I mean, I'm not even sure what else I would do with it other than something similar to what I sang with it. Um, so again, that's an example of where melody comes largely out of the chord progression and the words. Um, I have a recent song called The Days. Again, the link is there. Uh, and the, it's been interesting for me, anyway, to think about the development of the melody of, of this song uh, the chord progression of uh, both the verse and the chorus are, uh, are really simple. Mostly, um, they're, they're just two chords each, okay? So that, you wouldn't think that does very much to limit the melodic choices. Uh, the rhythm is also very simple, okay? So let's see where we can go from here. So one day I was just playing... Um, two chords, B flat and C, back and forth. And I just started to kind of hum and sing over it, okay? just something very kind of free-flowing and uh, it just felt soulful to me and I knew that I wanted to do something with that so um, after some hours I just kept coming back to that and just kind of doing that kind of humming stuff right those two chords um, uh, call me crazy but after hours of doing this without words I, I finally got some inspiration and put some words down and I think this is really a case where uh, the words drove the melody. It was going to be um, kind of somber, uh, to be honest. Somber but soulful. Uh, now, I had already been fooling around, even before I started with that C and B flat, I had been fooling around totally separately. In my mind, they weren't connected at all with a little rhythmic thing that eventually became the chorus, although at this point I didn't know it. I thought I just had this thing in my notebook that, and I think I may have recorded it on my phone just to get kind of the rhythm and the sense of it. But it's super simple. It's just, again, D to uh, G and ends in, in A, and there's a little rhythmic device on the G you'll hear right now. So just as simple as could be a little, this little syncopated thing on the, uh, uh, with the hammer on the G. Um, I also had a line that I stole from uh, Cormac McCarthy's book, The Road, uh, which I think I mentioned um, a couple episodes ago when I talked about lyrics, the day to shape the days upon. And I think I mentioned when I did that, that I just, one, I love the sense of it, but I also love the rhythm of it and kind of the mouth feel of it. That's a, don't underestimate that. Look for that uh, as you come up with phrases. So, so how does that fit in with uh, this chorus thing that I just played? The day, the shape, the day, the hall. The day, the shape, the day, the hall. Day to shape the days upon. And then you can 
can keep going if you want, or go into the, or, well, what I do is a transition, so that last line, then A, I haven't talked about transitions yet. I will um, uh, in the next lecture, but uh, or in the next talk. Sorry, I'm an old professor, college professor, so lecture. The word lecture comes naturally to me. But that transition back into the B flat or into the C, uh, that kind of thing, little detail is really important to pay attention to. Anyway, so now I kind of had you know I put this. Um, uh, this line to the chorus, it's pretty much the whole chorus. Uh, and I think you can hear that that A kind of drives the melody at that point. There's sort of nowhere else to go. The day, the shape, the day apart. The day, the shape, the day Okay, so, and, and by the way, and this harkens back to our discussion in harmony of uh, adding twos, fours, and sixes, on that A chord I hammer on the fourth. That fourth What's the fourth of A? A fourth up from A, perfect fourth is D. So that fourth anticipates, it hooks in to that tonic chord of D that's coming, right? It's a really powerful hook to, um, uh, to, to swing back into uh, the tonic, into the start of the chorus. So that's another, that's an example again of how these little, um, suspensions, uh, suspended notes uh, add, added to your chords really, really help. Um, so at that point I was kind of free, I felt free to build on that foundation um, of the chorus with different lyrics, um, which, and this is the main thing I want to illustrate now, that drove different melodies, okay? So I'm gonna, again, sing this chorus again, the day to shape the days upon. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to switch it up with different lyrics, different words over it, that kind of um, uh, expand the idea or um, uh, evolve the idea of that first line. Um, but you'll, you'll know the rhythm of the lyric is gonna be different. And that's going to help drive the changes that you're going to hear in the melody as I elaborate this chorus. So this is a little bit of a different thing. You know, chorus we normally think of as kind of the same thing repeated over and over, maybe with small variations, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, these are the same chords, but the rhythm of the words and then what that allows me to do with the melody is, for me, a lot of fun. So I hope you like it. So, just starting with the chorus. The day to shape the day is upon The day to shape the day is upon The day to shape the day is upon
real simple chords, simple rhythm, uh, changing the feel of the words, the length of the lyrical phrase, lets you just go where it takes you naturally with the melody, okay? And again, if you think about each of these phrases, they all have their own rhythm. They all have a rhythm. They're not just random words put in. There, there are uh, they're words that fit with the rhythm and drive uh, the variations on the melody that I just uh, sang for you. So I just wanted to give you some illustrations of the points that I talked about last melody and how the house you create for melody um, uh, fits in or drives the, uh, your choices and limits your choices, thankfully, um, and hope that uh, you're able to, mm, uh, if not get your melody for free, get it uh, pretty easily once you have the rest of your song's house established. So I'll leave it there today. Um, I'll be back soon with uh, uh, the next part on um, structure, song structure, and bridges. A little bit on bridges, because people seem interested in bridges. Okay, until then, stay in tune.